See, to walk by faith means you're not given proof. Do you know that? You're not given proof. You're not given all a bunch of evidence. The faith that you have being authored by the Father is inside of you. It is the truth of you. Your faith is the truth of you. God is the author and finisher of our faith. Those who belong to him. But there are a great many who don't belong to him. Those who believe in Christ, they don't need a nudging to believe in Christ. Sometimes to motivate, yes, not to believe in Christ. That means you know you have been watching since birth. And those of you who have been watching since birth, that means you've been connected to prophetic things. You can actually understand and comprehend it in a very different way. You see more than the average person. You may not be able to explain it, but you interpret things differently. You see cautions all over the place. Very close to paranoid, yes, but also very expectant. If life were to return to normal, you would be discouraged. Sounds odd, doesn't it? But you would be. Why? Because you know that the Lord's coming is not marked by some normal time in the earth, but an abnormal time, the time we live in now. And even geology is yelling out these events that are happening in the earth are yelling a message to everybody. You're screaming louder and louder. Everything in creation is screaming loud and is screaming towards us, not to the air, but towards us. You ever read that scripture, creation groans for the manifestation of the sons of God? And then you read John the Gospel of John, where it says, To as many as believe upon his name, and them has he given power to become sons of God. A son of God is a direct creation. Then you read further in the New Testament, and then you see where you're promised to have a born-again spirit, that God will actually have you be born again, have a born-again spirit. And when you have that born-again spirit, it even tells you what that born-again spirit does. It desires the Word of God. It does not desire things of flesh. And those who have that born-again spirit no longer walk after those things of the flesh anymore. So you're not seeking these things of flesh, but of the Spirit. That's the beginning of your transformation. Those who are born again of the Spirit, those are the ones who belong to the Lord. Not one of them will be condemned, because the Lord said, All that come to me, the Father hath given me, and I will in no wise cast them out, and I will raise them up the last day. So once you have that born again Spirit that seeks the absolutes of Christ, the truth of Christ, not for gain, not just to appease somebody, but for truth, and you begin to walk in the Spirit, which means you have lost your appetite and your desires for those things of flesh. Those who do this truly belong to the Lord. They have a born-again spirit because that born-again spirit does not desire nor can it be fed by things of flesh, but only by the Word of God. So to you, you cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, which means this word. That's how you live. That's how you're nourished. To eat and become a glutton and to gain weight, that doesn't mean you're going to be satisfied internally. But we know that we can be in a hungry state and still be satisfied by the Word of God. If that were not so, fasting would be impossible. These are things our Lord put in place so that none, nobody could be fooled. In truth, if you were to apply these things to your mind, on a, on a, just be uh, have your mind ready to see these things in real life, you would never be fooled again by another human being. You would know, no matter what they said, no matter what they did, you would know who is who. Because the Lord said, again, you'll know a tree by its fruit. You're not going to know it any other way. And to know the fruit of a human being is to know the simple fruit. There's fruit of the spirit and fruit of the flesh. And when you look at a person, what do you see? All those who belong to Christ. Christ will keep you. Who do you think has kept you this long? You think you did it? You did not do it. You are oblivious as to how you have come this far spiritually. I know that because the word says that. We're sent here to intercede. That means for all men, not just one or two. We're not to pick favorites. We're not to have favoritism in our hearts. Do you know that? That's in the New Testament, and a lot of people don't know that. You're not to favor one over the other. You're not to do that. You really are not. But unfortunately, that's in the hearts of many. So the Lord has to deliver a great many Christians from that mindset. Meaning what? He's going to break these lines and these ways that we have that are against his word. He's going to cause them to fail in our hands. A nation gets according to how they live. That's in the word of God. According to how the people live their lives, the Lord will appoint a person. That's what they receive. All too often we'll pray for one thing, but prayer openly can also be scripted. So a person can pray for something, but it can be a scripted prayer. So it's not really, it doesn't mean it's real. A nation gets 
according to how they live, they will receive a king according to how they live their lives, which is why the Lord said, if my people, he didn't say if the world, he said, if my people who are called by my name, if they would turn and seek his face and begin to pray and begin to do all those things Jesus advised us to do, the very simple things, then he would hear from heaven and heal the land. He never said the world, he said you. If you would pray, not the world. If you would humble yourself, not the world. See, a lot of Christians are looking for the world to change and to make all these decisions so everything can be correct right in the land. That's wrong. That's not who has the power. The word says, if God's people would change, the change will come. We've had that demonstrated. It does not matter what man does. The situation gets worse and worse and worse. Every time the church is distracted, something terrible happens in the world. Every time the church lets the guard down, Satan oversteps them. But if we would humble ourselves, and every time the church becomes prideful, and we divide even more, the church has been divided so much, it's, it's just incredible. Nobody pays attention to that. We don't need 50 churches on one street corner and that indeed happens in america nobody wants to go to the other guy's church so everybody starts their own church and then you have half of them now who talk bad about the competition it is rotten to the core just like the lord said there's rottenness under it that will be discovered there are things under the skirts of those who are dressed and it will be discovered Oh, there's so many changes coming in a very short time. So many changes. The Lord's people dictate the condition of the land. But see, you have to think spiritual to even capture that. Because for too long, even Christians have been saying, well, if we get the right president, everything's going to be okay. That is not biblical. That is not what the Lord said. The Lord said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn and seek his face. Then something good would happen to the land. He would heal the land. We're sent here to intercede. It's funny. A lot of Christians talk about the ruling class when in truth, Christians are the ruling class. Isn't that ironic? See, we have a choice to either walk, live our lives by faith, or to continue living, being at, uh, uh, at the mercy of other folks. That's why Christians have so many complaints. It's why they point fingers so much. It's why they can blame people so much. See, we have a choice before us. And who's made that choice? I know for me and my household, we're going to walk by faith. And I believe in the Lord's, what the Lord said. And indeed, he has demonstrated them all because I already believe. Once you believe in something, he'll demonstrate. Some of you have found that out to be true. He didn't demonstrate because you don't believe. He'll do that when you do believe. Because we are to believe by faith that pleases God. It is impossible to please God without faith. So he's not going to show you proof first. But if you accept what he's saying and honor his word without having any evidence or proof, but that simple confirmation internally, which by the way should be enough, then you'll see his handiwork in your household. You'll be a first-hand witness of his works, but you must believe first. It must be confirmed internally in you first. Because if it's not confirmed internally, guess what happens? You'll see his works, as many people have, and you'll disregard them. Imagine if we all got together and prayed that somebody's cancer be healed. Here's what would happen. Those who really believe in the Lord would accept that as coming from the Lord. But you have skeptics inside the church. And they would say, well, did the person take vitamins or something prior to that? And somebody would say, yeah, oh, well, that probably did it. Well, it was the vitamins. That's what they do. That happens all the time. So what does the Lord do? So that you will never give credit to a doctor, to a vitamin, to some medicine, to your friends, to your family. What does he do? He makes all them to fail before your eyes, which means you will sit in a sickened condition and everybody will fail you. And you will indeed feel that everybody failed you so that when he does heal you finally, you will never be able to say, oh, it's because of the vitamins. Oh, it was the medicine. Oh, it was this surgeon or this doctor or this thing over here. No, nope, you'll say that was from the Lord. It is so important that at some point in your life, you know the Lord delivered you. Do you know why? If you don't know the Lord delivered you with the time we have coming, here's what will happen. You'll go out there in the world. Something will take place and surely kindle that nature of a believer in you. You'll go out there and talk to somebody and you'll say, well, the Lord this and the Lord that. And it will go nicely. But 
then somebody else will come up and say, are you sure about that? And they'll present another way, another way that you have never heard before. And it will, if you're not careful, if you've never been delivered by the Lord, you'll begin to chalk up your own deliverance or your own happenings in life to something else. I've seen that all too often, and it's already promised to come. You'll begin to say, well, maybe it could be something else, and then you start losing faith. How do you think people are going to fall away in the first place? By that same thing, they're going to say, well, maybe it could have been this other thing. I remember when Zachariah Sension's work was introduced. Do you know how many Christians that spoiled? Let me give you a recap on that. When that story came out, and people began to look at archaeology, and indeed a lot of proof, listen to me, proof, they saw proof of something, of a concept somebody had. They began to say, well, maybe I was created by them. And, and, and you know, the Bible is just telling the story of what they already knew. I've heard that all too much. And then you have people that will say, well, maybe Zechariah Sinchin's right. Maybe that was Satan in the Old Testament. Or maybe Zechariah Sinchin's right. Well, you know, maybe this, maybe that. And they start maybe everything so much till they become hateful and indignant toward the word. Then they become an enemy of those who believe in the simplicity of Scripture. And they try to turn the Bible into this scientific proof book or historical concept while they cling closer and closer to what people have said or scientists say, losing their faith the entire time. The Bible already tells us that people will fall away from the faith. They're going to fall away. They're not going to believe anymore, just like they do today. You know, just about every week now, there are reports out there of ministers and people who once believed in Christ. They're admitting to their people, well, I, I, I just don't believe in Christ. I never did. How can you preach for 15 years, then you admit to everybody you never believed in Christ? And how can this be happening in the United States of America? On a weekly basis, people walking out of their churches admitting to everybody, I don't think Jesus is the only way. How is this happening? And it's been happening now for the last seven to eight years. We're talking about bishops. We're talking about pastors who have several churches. Things they're just, they're just saying they don't believe in Christ. They believe that the Bible is a historical book and that Jesus is just another, you know, spokesman. Are you kidding? This is what they're saying. Why? Well, it just so happens their faith was challenged by some of the concepts put forward. And I'm telling you now, you guys, are you even ready for the new religion? There is a new religion coming. It is not Islam. It's a new religion. Some people know about this new religion. They know there's nothing they can do to stop it. Some people know about it. And it will come. A one world religion will come. It most certainly will come. And people will follow that one world religion. And that thing will worship a God his fathers knew not. He has a dead giveaway. What God does the Antichrist worship? A God his fathers knew not. That means nothing in the historical record. That's what it means. It means they're going to be doing something new. That means no religion on this earth because all these religions on the earth, surely the, the Antichrist, their fathers knew about it. Islam is one of those that have been around for a long time. These other ones have been around for a long time. There is a new one coming. It's inching its way in here and it is effective. You hear the cry of it all the time. And let me give you a news flash. In the Bible, everybody thinks they're right about the beast also. It is important that no, not one of us blindly follow men as Christians. If you belong to Christ, then you agree with Christ. You cannot agree with both man and Christ. You can't do it. You're going to have to choose one or the other. And no, President Trump is not the Antichrist. I'm sorry. He didn't fit the bill. You know why? Because a great many people don't like him. And they've given him all respect among the Republicans. The beast won't even enter power that way. The beast enters to his power seat by proxy by the death of another. Someone has to fall, and then the beast will take that position, but they will not give him honor of the kingdom. He comes up from a small people. He travels to the fattest places of the province. That means he's in the Middle East. Then he forms a coalition in the Middle East. Yes, President Trump is, is making little deals with these countries, but that's, that doesn't make him the beast. That's part of the architecture, yes. Everything a president will do, they're going to do according to God's prophecies. And they don't even know it, period. Because the prophecies of the Lord will never fail. 
That means it doesn't matter what a person does. Whatever they're doing is going to be in line with the prophecies. Because with these agreements that are in the Middle East now, anti-coalitions are being formed against them, which just so happen to be the very ones mentioned in the Bible. Just so you know, he's always showing us things. We always go through something so that we can see. See, the Lord said he also came so that those who could see could be blinded that they may see. That means when we think we know something, we have a tendency to stick to it, right? So he will blind us, cause us to be blind, cause all sorts of things to mess up so that he can begin to present us the truth that we may see again the right way. That's love because all of us deserve death, but he didn't give us death, did he? We don't deserve life. We have life by grace. That's what we have, life by grace. We don't deserve it. None of us do. And I thank God for us. I'm not going to take his grace for granted. I don't feel entitled to it, nor do I feel entitled to his mercy. But I'm very grateful for his grace and mercy. I'm not entitled to it. And because I'm not entitled to it, I realize that he did not have to bestow it upon me. But he did. See, that makes me thankful because I've seen mangled people in my life. I've seen people go through horrible things. And I used to ask myself, why would that person go through it and not me? Why would that person suffer for all these years and not me? Why would that person be trapped in a body that's like that and not me? You guys may not understand just how thankful I am. I know the condition I can be in. That's why me and pride, we just don't work together, right? I can't, how can I have pride? For what? There's no way I'm going to believe myself above the Lord. I believe the Lord above every man, but I don't even believe my own concepts against yours. I'll never do that, but I will always believe in the Lord's word above all, and I'm careful not to interpret his word. I seek the Lord to give me the answer and the truth of his word. I try not to interpret the word. See, the word is given to us. I interpret the word. That means I am forming it into something where I can understand it. I don't want it that way. I want the truth of the word. I want the Lord to open my ears that I don't have to interpret his word. I want the truth of it. Christ has come. Now everybody has an opportunity until he returns again to have their souls saved, to accept that they were created. They weren't hatched out of a, you know, some weird plan or something like that, but they were made with a purpose, fearfully and wonderfully made. I hope we can settle these facts within ourselves quickly because you're not going to like the world you may be entering into. It's going to be very different from this world. Things are going to be very intrusive into your life. We have new technologies out there. I'm telling you, the rollouts are coming. And it's going to be very difficult for some of you to accept the new rollouts. The Father is today the same way he's been yesterday and forevermore. He has the same value system. He expects the same things. Man cannot change the mind of the living God in that way. And I believe that the world has become a little too free in what they have been accepting. And we've drifted from becoming a Christian nation. And now we don't know what we are. Because the values we've been operating by were by no means Christian. But they were so incredibly carnal. And everything was okay. Things were totally out of order. And things were getting worse. And they're getting worse. America has the highest count of people with problems in the entire world. And that's our fruit. For the sake of the Christians in this country, this country has been preserved. Not because it did everything right, but because believers are in this country. You guys know that we're very close to being a Sodom and Gomorrah. Marriage is no longer important in this nation. It really isn't. Family values have fallen apart. People go around changing what God made them to be, and that's supposed to be okay. How can that be okay? How can it be okay to openly admit that God made a mistake? He didn't make a mistake. And the hate level in this country, that's not okay either. This is a spiritual battle. It can hardly be seen. When the Lord gives somebody a born-again spirit, they lose their desire that they previously had. They really do. And things go through, right? I mean, they just are okay with that born-again spirit. They're a changed person. That's something that the Father sends upon a person. To encourage them is good. To hear them is good. I'll always encourage them to try it the Lord's way. I'll always do that. And I'm very patient. So I'll never rush anybody to do it because I realize that everybody has to make their own decision. Nobody can go to heaven based on my decision. They can't do that. 
Nobody's going to have eternal life based upon my conversion. And they have to choose for themselves. We're called to be patient while they're making that choice to assist when they call us when they need us, to be ready in season and out of season. We're called to do that too. Not to be so, you know, turned off from something that we just won't give them a chance. No, that's not, we're supposed to be spiritual people. And if you have a born again spirit thing, you can see the other spirit of a person. That's what you begin to work toward. See, I realize everybody's, you know, all flesh is corrupted. Jesus didn't come here to save the flesh of a person, but the soul of a person. The flesh is going to be discarded. Most people have messed up their flesh in the first place. We ate the wrong things. We had the wrong habits. And it's, you know, half of us got high blood pressure, high sugar, you name it. We're just all messed up. We continue to have these cravings. We overfeed ourselves and underfeed ourselves. We have so many things wrong with our flesh. But the Lord came to save the soul, which supersedes the flesh. Listen to me. If you have faith in the word, that means you believe and trust in the word. That means you are not looking for you to do anything, but you're looking for Jesus to do all things. So the key is not to have faith that you're doing something, but to have faith that Jesus can do it. Therefore, if you said to the mountain, go move, you're not saying it because you believe that you can do it. You're saying it because Jesus said it was removed already. You believe that he can do something and it shall be done. Most people try to have faith in themselves. The power and the authority is in Christ, not the individual, not the human being. We have power to mess things up. But if we have faith in Christ, in his word, if we have faith in his word, then we're looking to his word to accomplish it. God watches over his word to perform it. Should his word be loosed on something which you have the right to do, then God watches over his word to perform it. Now to release a word of the Lord, it has to be in his timing. It can't be in your timing. It has to be in the Lord's timing within his will. So if you release his word within his will, which is his timing, that is God's word. And he will watch over his word to perform it. He performs what Jesus speaks because Jesus is one. The word of God made flesh that dwelt among men. God watches over his word before me. So don't try to believe that you can do anything, but believe that you are a servant through whom the word can be given. Do you understand? You're a vessel, are you not? You house something holy. That's why you're deemed holy, because you house something holy. Not that you are holy, because absent Christ, you are not holy, but because you house something holy. That changes everything. Do you understand? Now, the next time you dream, don't believe that your words are going to do anything. When you do something in the name of Jesus, you're doing something in the stead of Jesus, in the place of Jesus. Jesus has already rebuked Satan. So now when you rebuke something, you stand in the place. You say, wait a minute. I have authority to say this in the stead of Christ that you be rebuked. See, now you're telling that thing that by Jesus, it is already rebuked. Do you understand? And it has no choice. It doesn't have to listen to you, but it cannot deny the words of the Messiah. Let's be ready by being sincere, not being stubborn and resistive, but sincere. That resistive uh, spirit, right, that was in a great many to go against the word of the Lord to test it, that seemingly it, it came... Many of those who, who have a um, high intelligence or, or is able to grasp things of the world, they struggle the most with their own intellect. They have such a wealth of knowledge, they struggle with their own intellect. I tell you that all of you who have been discounted because people have told you you don't know enough, this, that, and the other, you're going to fare better than those who seemingly knew it all. Because, I'm, you know, people who have dealt with a lot of things and they have acquired a lot of knowledge, they have to shuffle through quite a few things. But you do not, so you might want to be thankful for that. It's almost like you've been preserved, not polluted, with all the knowledge that we've been polluted with. And those of you with degrees, you're going to have to fight through what you think you know to get to the truth. And you should know by now that it takes a real fight to accept the truth, doesn't it? Because your own intellect that you have ambitiously sought fights against you. So you have to think of this one thing. Why would a man ever doubt scripture? You ready for the answer? It's because that man believes in something else. That's why. And I hope you understand that. When you believe in something else, it's hard to believe in scripture. Everybody believes in something. The question is, what do you believe in? There are plenty of things that fight against scripture. 